Hey everybody, Mike here. We're way down here on the coast, about two hours away from our normal job today. You can see there's the ocean right there. We got a just a small addition flow we're pouring. It's pretty thick. We got 13 yards. We've got a big deep deep area right here. It's about 13 inches thick, some type of barren wall. So we're just getting going. It's about 20 degrees out this morning. It's gonna get up to about a high of 34. They're putting some type of wood flooring over this, so we just need to hand trowel it. Get it, get it smooth somewhat with a hand trowel. No power troweling today. Truck just got here, we're mixing up. Got a little accelerator we're putting in it. Using a 4,000 PSI. Second truck just showed up, he's up there mixing. So it shouldn't take us very long to get this poured. So I'm, I'm down here working today for the foundation contractor. I was hired just to pour and finish the floor. Now the general contractor, the guy running the job, he's the one that prepped, he put the poly down, he put the styrofoam down, and that was all on the plan. And we just, we put the wire in it and the rebar in that, in that thickened area as he called for. So that's all the prep we had to do on this job. We came down, we shot grade, we snapped our chalk lines. I got a grade pin there in the middle with a nail through it right at top of floor. Now this is just a small addition added that they added on to an existing house down here on the ocean. So it's just a little over 400 square feet on this. And the foundation, you know, they just wanted a full basement and they're gonna, they're gonna re, refinish the whole house. We're gonna come in later on down the road and on the old part over there to the right that you can't see too good right now, we're going to put an epoxy coating over that. That floor is in pretty rough shape, so we're going to grind it down and, and put a nice finished epoxy floor on that. Now, so we're pouring the concrete here. Like I said, this figure is about five yards, five, six yards at four inches. And for whatever reason, it was a, it was a five to six inch thick floor. And that big thickened area in the middle, that's going to be some support for the, the framing. That took about four yards right in itself just to fill that. So we had to match the other slab so we couldn't really, we couldn't really change the ele elevation of the floor at all. We had to go with what they got. So I got 13 and a half yards coming down here. Got a little piece of wire float on us right there so we pulled it right out, put it back down. So we got six and a half to seven yards on uh, the first truck and then about six and a half on the second. The temperature, like I said, it was it was about 20 degrees this morning, so the driveway coming down, back and down to this was frozen solid, which was a good thing because a couple days before it rained and it was so muddy, there's no way we would have got a concrete truck down there. We would have had to use a pump truck to do this, so being frozen made a uh, actually made it a little bit more convenient saved a little money for everybody you can see I just made that center pad using that metal pin with a nail through it and we'll strike off that for the floor now the concrete was really hot it was uh, 4,000 4, psi concrete it had hot water in it at about 150 degrees and it had about a two hour drive to the job site <laughs> So by the time it got here, and then we put the accelerator in it, we could feel it right now. It was starting to set up on us a little bit. So we're kind of hustling as we're doing this. You know, you can tell when the concrete's hot and when it's not. And uh, you don't want to give it too much time down there. Otherwise, you'll have a hard time screeding it. And then you'll have a really hard time just bull floating it. Now Darren and Luke, they're going to stay and just finish this by hand today. They just need to get it smooth enough to put some type of flooring over it. So they're going to they're going to do a pretty good bull float on it. So by the time they got to get back on it with a mag and a hand trowel, it just makes that part a little bit easier. Now I'm up getting the second truck ready, getting that first truck out of the way, backing down the second truck, getting him mixed up, getting the bags of accelerator in him. You can see the chute right there. We take that last chute on the concrete truck and we flip it over and hang it when we pour down inside a basement like this. It just helps make pouring it a little easier. You can you can kind of direct the concrete where you want it. It doesn't have to fall quite so far. And then we also use our little eight foot chute there when we need to. 
Well, that's about seven yards dumped on the ground right now. We're gonna get this second truck dumped out. How many of you guys? How many of you guys pour concrete like we do? I mean, small crew do floors just about every day, slabs, patios, walkways, pool decks. How many of you guys out there do the same type of stuff that we do? And then, who out there wants to learn how to do this or wants to start their own business? You know, I can help you inside the Concrete Underground. The link for that is down in the description below. So that's my private training. If you need extra help, you can just join that and I can help you inside there. We decided, that little pause right there, we decided to give him a few more gallons. It was kind of stiff, kind of drying up pretty quick, so we gave him five gallons just to get the concrete a little bit looser. Now you can see us changing that chute around. See how easy that is. That makes it pretty convenient for pouring concrete. Get that eight foot chute out of the way just for a minute. Luke's over there getting all the edges magged and ready to screed and so, because we know that we're only going to have a few minutes to get this down, being as hot as it is. It got up to about a high of 34, 35 degrees today, but it was sunny. So even at those temperatures, with the concrete being in the sun, and then the bags of accelerator in it, it still, it still cures up pretty good, being outside like this. They ended up finishing up troweling about... 2 to 2 30 in the afternoon so here it is about 8 30 right now in the morning if that gives you any indication of how good this stuff dried in those cold temperatures being on styrofoam helps too it, it helps hold the heat into the concrete a little bit longer than if you pour right on the cold ground most of the jobs we do uh, this time of year have styrofoam under them here in Maine because we had so many freeze and thaw cycles between November in March we have some pretty cold temperatures so the most of the floors and slabs we do have some styrofoam under it I don't know why they decided not to put the styrofoam under that thickened area in the middle probably had something to do with the weight the amount of weight that was going on it but you know a lot of times I don't get into the design of the floors I just get into pouring and finishing them I'm gonna change the angle of the camera here right in a second so let's get this other part screeded first we're trying to decide we're right there at the end right now we're trying to decide because that's the only access we have with the concrete truck you know how much concrete do we need in here and not have too much but we also don't want to run short either if we get way too much in then we got to shovel it out if we don't have enough then we'll have to either bucket it around from the outside or, you know, dump, we dump some on the ground out there and shovel it around. So we're trying to get just as much as we need in here, but not have too, too much. So we're going to get rid of the chute. We'll pass that to the driver, and he's going to wash that up for us. Our drivers usually wash up our tools when we pass them out. Do you guys have the same type of drivers? Do they wash your stuff up as they're waiting for you? Let me know down in the comments. You can see the aggregate that shows after you get done screeding that would just be really difficult to finish so we're using the bull float and the the head on that bull float the thing that makes it tilt back and forth we got from superior magvibe if you want to check out magvibe.com they got some really good um, handles and bull floats and they also have a an apparatus that helps the bull float vibrate a little bit if you need that as you bull float it smooth yeah, you can see the little diff different angle now with the sun shining. The guys were in the background. They were f doing the framing on this, so they really needed this done before they could frame it. Otherwise, we would have had a lot more difficult time pouring this. Now Darren's just finishing up with a 7-foot screed. He's got to get that corner bowl floated before he can turn and come down the other way. And then Luke's magging out a little piece there that they had to break out for some plumbing. So he's just going to flush that back in even with the other floor. And I'm up top with a concrete drop. I'm getting making sure everything's getting washed up nice and clean because if you don't if you don't wash stuff right up when it's 20 degrees, the concrete just freezes right to the tools in just a matter of minutes. 
and that just makes it a little more difficult to clean them up after. So we had enough in there. You can see I'm shoveling just a few shovelfuls out. I had to shovel out about three full shovelfuls. So that was a pretty good guess. And just as soon as Darren gets finished up, we're gonna bow float that. And then they had to let this, they had to let this sit about an hour to an hour and a half before they got on it to stop mag floating it out. So that's the way we pour a small concrete floor addition onto an existing house. You know, they drill and pin the foundation to the existing one. And then we come in and, and just pour and finish the floor like normal most of the time. So thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you on the next one.